good afternoon i know all of you are a little bit tired here in nanotechnology and nanoscience uh, i don't know how many of you are how many of you have a biology background or zoology background as such can you raise your hands only uh, many of many of you are having background in zoology and how many non keralites non keralites only one okay so anyway i have been given only 30 minutes so i won't be able to elaborate on forensic entomology I, we will just discuss some of the fundamentals about um, uh, forensic entomology and let me confess that i'm not a forensic scientist i'm not an expert in forensic science but all of you are so probably i'm the only person who is not an expert in this hall so i am an entomo basically i am i am an entomologist so i'll be talking about insects and uh, how we can use insects for some of the uh, criminal investigations i have one friend who is working with the um, central forensic laboratory in hyderabad recently she has been transferred to pune we used to discuss a lot of things about um, forensic investigations so there is only a connection i have with <laughs> forensic department so i was interested in forensic entomology uh, my interest started some 20 years back when i read an article a chinese story about a murder that was described in one of the books ancient chinese books in 13th century it was about a, a murder in a village happened in a village and the preliminary investigations revealed that the murder was committed by a sharp object a sharp sickle or something like that so the local investigator investigator was invited then what he said, what he did he ordered the villagers to bring their sickles to a particular place so everybody brought the sickles and interestingly one of the sickles attracted flies here it is said that blow flies green color and blue color there are colored flies are there they are called blow flies so blow flies were attracted to a particular sickle the later that person was the owner of that sickle was um, interrogated and he confessed that the uh, crime was committed by him probably this was the first incidence of using uh, forensic entomology or using insects in criminal investigation so based on these stories and so many other readings so i wrote an article on forensic entomology probably this was for the first time in india writing a popular article on forensic entomology that was published in the prestigious journal resonance which is which is um, published by indian academy of sciences bangalore after that i was invited to many uh, academic conferences not a conference like this basically those conferences were for biologists zoologists and entomologists so it is very easy to explain what is insect and uh, what is entomology all those things uh, since this is a heterogeneous group i am not very sure that um, all of you are aware of some of the uh, basic things about entomology anyway entomology means study of insects all of you know that uh, insect group that is the biggest group of um, living organisms having 1 million described species that means we know the names of 1 million species but it is estimated that there could be at least 5.5 million insect species which are yet to be described we don't know the names of these insects especially in uh, places like india even in kerala if you take if you uh, survey your around your houses you will get many many new species of insects so only uh, only one fifth of the total insects are named at present
Okay, this is a typical insect. The name insect has come from ins and sect. Means cut into, that is the uh, meaning of insect. That means if you see the body of an insect, it has got three very, very distinct uh, parts, head, thorax and abdomen. That is why it is not an insect. Okay. So this just to give an idea about the diversity of insects. There are so many, so many types of insects, very small insects, big insects, uh, some of the microscopic insects are there. So it's just so diverse. And insects can be classified basically into two, based on their mode of development, how they develop, the stages through which they undergo. One is known as holometabolus or which has complete metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, you know what is metamorphosis. Metamorphosis means change in morphology, change in structure, that is metamorphosis. There is complete metamorphosis. That means there is no similarity between the adult and the young ones. That is what is known as complete metamorphosis. They have four stages in their life cycle, eggs, larva, pupa and adult. So there is a stage known as pupa in which the transformation takes place. It's a kind of a meditation. The insect is meditating inside for the beautiful wings. So just imagine butterflies. Butterfly larvae are ugly things. Larva are like a worm-like thing. But the adult is very beautiful. That is happening inside the pupa. Okay. So second type of um, insects are known as hemimetabolus. That means they don't have a complete metamorphosis. There is some sort of similarity between young ones and adults. Young ones are normally known as nymphs, not larva, and adults. Because they don't have a pupa stage. Okay, food of the insects, that's also very diverse. There are different, some of, some of them are purely vegetarian. They may take nectar or plant uh, leaves, shoots, flowers, etc. But some of them, some of them can bite us and take our blood. There are blood feeding insects like mosquitoes and some of them prefer dead bodies which are of interest to forensic entomology. So forensic entomology means application of uh, insect biology, behavior, ecology, etc. in criminal investigation. That is what is forensic entomology. So we can classify um, forensic entomology into three. Number one is urban forensic entomology. That is related to pesticides, uh, pests, etc. When there is a, uh, you know, that litigation between uh, the owner of a house and the tenant, that kind of things, or uh, between the pesticide company and the customer. So that type of um, entom forensic entomology is known as urban forensic entomology. Second is known as stored product forensic entomology, related to insect infestation of uh, food grains. So there could be disputes between the supplier and the customer. So that kind of things. And the third one is important to us, that is the medical legal forensic entomology. That's what we are going to talk about. So that uh, deals with uh, death investigation as well as um, drug trafficking. That also comes under medical legal entomology. So what can be, what are the areas in which we can apply insects or forensic entomology? So number one is uh, time of death, which is very important for uh, forensic science. And less important, place of death, it may not be always possible. Mode of death, how the murder or the, that, that has been uh, committed. Then it can also be used to get some, uh, you know, that in, uh, DNA samples maybe from the uh, blood feeding insects. Very rare chances, not always. Then even for drug trafficking, you can, uh, you know, that you get an idea about the origin of uh, these kinds of contraband things like cannabis, from which country it has originated and through which countries it has traveled. So based on the insect species, you can uh, give a clue about the origin of the drug. Now we will discuss about the crime investigation, which is insects used in uh, criminal investigation. Uh, these are the import, some of the these are the important insects. I, I, I told you that there are one million type of kinds of uh, 
uh, insects and there are about 40 genera uh, uh, order not genera 40 orders of uh, insects like diptera coleoptera lepidoptera there are many names you need not bother about all those names these are the important groups of insects flies beetles uh, butterflies and moths ants wasps etc even among them the first two are the most important flies and uh, flies and beetles flies means house fly blow fly flesh fly there are different kinds of fly that's also a very big group they are known as dipterans because they have only two wings normally all other insects have four wings there will be two pairs of wings two four wings and two hind wings but in diptera it's a highly advanced evolutionarily it's a highly advanced insect their hind wings are modified into structures known as halteres which is a balancing organ so they have only one pair of wings so they are known as dipterans so generally we call them flies then beetles beetles are otherwise known as coleoptera coleoptera means coleo means sheath sheath like wings because their four wings are modified as protective structures or known as um, elytra it is known as that they are very hard that is not used for flying only hind wings are used for flying so it's a protective structure so it is very difficult to kill them even that hard are them okay So just to give an idea, as a uh, lighter thing, always we are talking about serious things. Uh, scarab is an insect, which is very famous in Egyptology. Probably I have seen in the movie Mummy. Lot of uh, beetles are coming out. They are all scarabs, scarabidae, which belongs to a, the group scarabidae. So according to Egypt, Egypt Egyptian mythology, these are divine things or it is very similar to you can say that uh, it represents the sun god Ra the Egyptian sun god is Ra R A okay and the morning sun is known as Kapri so they have different names for different stages of sun noon sun is different evening sun is different so this uh, Kapri has a face of this beetle scarab why it is so this these are dung beetles scarabidae scarabs are dung beetle dung rollers probably have seen them they roll the dung into small uh, you know that um, round globe you know that um, uh, structures and that is rolled that is used for uh, you know that breeding laying their eggs and um, feeding the larva so it is believed that capri is a scarab which is rolling the sun Okay, it is rolling the sun to the, uh, you know, that uh, rolling up till it comes at the top. Like at 12 o'clock, the sun is at the top. Then it is rolling it down. Okay, from that it has come this uh, scarab. So scarab beads are typical examples of beetles. And all flies are not important. Uh, that's a very big group. So the most important uh, flies are blow flies number one these are the first insects which colonize a dead body they arrive for the first time okay just after within hours of death they colonize the, they come to the dead body and lay their eggs second is flesh flies second to come they are the flesh flies or sarcophagy they are known as the third one is forehead flies later on they will they will arrive and finally black soldier fly when the dead body the flesh is already gone when there, the, there are only bones when the dead body is dry that time the these insects come so there is a pattern in the colonizing of uh, that body okay which is very important for us for forensic uh, investigation beetles come only later after the fly activities beetles will arrive okay maybe they, they will come for eating the uh, some of the uh, parts of the body like skin hair etc 
or it may be to eat the dipterian flies the fly larvae to eat the fly larvae also they can come so these are the different types of uh, beetle which arrive i think it is not very important for you hister beetles row beetle dermastid beetle rhizophaged beetles tinid beetles tenebroid tenebrinoid beetles so this are this is the order of arrival of this um, beetles on a dead body so this is the uh, succession i told you that there is a pattern of succession which helps us in calculating the uh, time of death if you see only the blow flies that means the death occurred very recently okay so if you see the uh, house flies second to come is house flies little more time then um, flesh flies may be second to third day only they will come they will arrive so there is a pattern house uh, flesh flies then the beetles different types of beetles will arrive okay so these are the uh, two important flies uh, i just discussed now califoridae or um, blow flies and flesh flies so if you want to calculate the time of death uh, you should know the age of the larva or pupa whatever whatever you find on the dead body so for that you should know the life cycle of the insect okay this is the typical life cycle of a blow fly you know that um, uh, blow fly is down they uh, lay hundreds of eggs normally they lay eggs uh, near the orifices near the mouth anus ear or if there is any wound they they prefer in those areas because the you know that volatiles volatile compounds will emit through them that's an attractant for the blow flies so for different types of um, insects the duration of development varies so the one should have very accurate information about the time how much time it will take for the eggs to develop into first instar of larva larvae have different uh, stages that is what is known as instars we call it instars so normally an insect fly has four instars first instar second instar third instar and fourth instar um no no in this case uh, only three three instars some of them have some of the insects have four instars like mosquitoes uh, flies have only three instars so you should know the duration how much time it will take for first instar to become second instar so there should there should be accurate data with you then only you can calculate how much time has elapsed since death i'm skipping this because i have already talked about uh, different stages and uh, different types of insects since there is no time i am skipping those, all these things okay now we will discuss some of the methods how uh, you can use insects uh, evidence in uh, you know reaching some of the conclusions okay when a forensic entomologist reaches a crime scene unfortunately we don't have um, forensic entomologists in india the science of forensic entomology is very primitive in our country whereas it is highly developed in places like usa uk belgium germany even in japan because they have been compiling data on insects which invade corpses we don't have that kind of basic data unfortunately today morning my friend who is working with um, forensic laboratory she told me whenever we see larvae on the dead body we will just wash it away okay so we don't care the larvae or whatever is on the body we will just clean it so that is happening um, because um, the importance of entomology is uh, not yet understood in our country and there are some academicians who are doing research on forensic entomology some of them are my friends there is one dr devinder singh in at punjab university he is doing some research but i don't think so far no case has been solved using entomological evidences in india to my knowledge at least there are no public uh, published works whereas if you see the american history america uh, you can see a lot of case histories uh, one of the case histories i will show you 
using which they could solve various kinds of um, you know that um, uh, crimes so when a when an entomologist or any person who is interested in entomology reaches the crime scene he has to collect insects different stages of insects so he should have some um, a, a kit of equipments with him he should have a small net for collecting the flying insects on the body he has to collect the larvae not only from the body but also from surrounding areas because um, after a few days these califorid larvae they will leave the body and they pupate in the soil so you have to collect because if the dead body is very old you may be able to see pupae of this califorid in the soil it has to be collected and all these specimens should be collected and carried to the laboratory for identification uh, some of them should be preserved at the scene itself because the size of the larva is very important from the size you can calculate you can find out what is the age of that larva so some sample should be preserved as such in alcohol and the remaining should be taken live in some containers that is mainly if it is very difficult to identify uh, larval forms of um, insects so you have to wait till the, they become adults so for emergency you have to carry them to the laboratory and rear them in artificial media then not only that you have to collect the person has to collect the temperature of that uh, area temperature of the worms as well as atmosphere and if possible you should collect all weather data from the nearest weather station we may not be in india we may not be having uh, that, that many weather stations in the us you, they have they have a lot of um, weather stations so they may get somewhat uh, you know that accurate weather data from the weather stations that's also very important because the development of um, uh, larvae and pupae of the insects that that is uh, influenced by climatic uh, conditions especially temperature because they are called blooded animals what does that mean that means they don't have any temperature regulatory system their temper body temperature depends on the atmospheric temperature so when the temperature increases the metabolism increases development will be very fast so if you don't know the uh, you know the temperature of that area so your assumptions will be incorrect because the age will be different we don't know uh, how much time it will take from first instar to second instar you should know that suppose you are getting a second instar larva so if you know only one value you will be applying that value for that for uh, say for example two days at 30 degrees celsius the first instar larva will become second instar in two days maybe you have only that data with you but if the temperature is very low, low it will take it may take three days or if it is more than that it may take only 1.5 days okay there will be errors so uh, these climatic data is also very important so how to determine the uh, time of death that is from uh, that is by aging the insect larva and the species of larva okay what what kind of insect is as uh, you know that infested the body you should also know what is the stage so we'll collect the insects on and around the corpse preserve some samples in alcohol as i said earlier image stage is transport to the lab for emergence uh, identify the stage of maggot development that is very important which stage you have uh, collected from the body suppose you have got second instar larva of a blow fly a non blow fly all blow flies are not alike there are specific differences one species is different from the other in terms of you know that uh, time for development but you have identified the species and you know you have the database with you so you know that from the eggs to the second instar larva it will take 3 days or 4 days whatever it is that means so you also know how much time normally it will take for a blow fly to arrive on the dead body say for example 4 hours so that that occurred approximately 3.3 uh, days and 
four hours before that there is the method by which we can calculate the mode of uh, this time of death so you may have to take into consideration various other aspects also you should know the temperature you should know, know the humidity which may also alter the development period so that should also so you should correct your data using this weather data also okay so that is how the uh, time of death is normally calculated from the species of insect as well as the stage of the insect because we have the data that uh, after death after how many days or how many hours a particular species arrive so based on that we can calculate the time of death in case you don't have uh, any other you know that um, data with you so you may have forensic science forensic experts have other methods to to know the calculate type of death so you know that i need not tell you what is the method suppose that is not working for some particular reasons then you can use insect data so it's an alternative actually it's not the sole method for uh, forensic investigation it's an alternative method if your normal method is not working then you can go for insect method so just to give you the idea how the temperature uh, affects the development it's a graph given that there is a, there is a lot of variation when the temperature goes up there is it will become faster and faster so i will just read out a, a case history there are so many hundreds of <laughs> case histories i have taken just two, only one which i published in, the, in my article so i have just copied and pasted it okay uh, without looking at that i can uh, i won't be able to you know that uh, tell you okay so it happened in usa this is taken from i have given the uh, reference is given given the usa it happened what happened was if uh, if us ago some ago means it was long back some 20 years back it was okay so how it is given in the, their report that's what i have given there okay year was not mentioned in that a few years ago on 4th june date is very important the body of a girl was found alongside a rural highway in the northwestern united states okay an autopsy revealed that she had died of multiple head and neck wounds inflicted by a heavy sharp object number 3 her brother had reported her missing approximately 4 days prior to the discovery of the corpse she had last been seen alive on the morning of 31st may in the company of a 30 year old army sergeant the primary suspect so there was a suspect okay you, you have to have that kind of suspects only with entomology you can you know that trace a criminal while considerable circumstantial, uh, circumstantial evidence supported the theory that the victim had been murdered uh, by the sergeant an accurate estimation of the time of death was crucial to establishing possible link between the suspect and the victim at the time when death occurred so time of death was not known several estimates were offered by medical examiners and investigators these were based largely on the physical appearance of the body and the extent to which decomposition had occurred in various organs as you do normally numerous fly larvae here comes the forensic entomologist adult flies and other insects were collected from in and around the victim's wounds some of the larvae were collected alive and reared to produce adult flies of species identification others were placed immediately into a liquid preservative to identify the development stage that's what i told you uh, reports describing the condition of the body when found and detailing autopsy procedures and results were reviewed weather data including uh, maximum and minimum temperatures incidence of rainfall cloud cover wind speed and direction and relative humidity were obtained from a weather station located a short distance from the crime scene these data indicated the environmental conditions to which the body and its associated insects were exposed based on this total array of evidences and demolish determined that the first insects to colonize the body had arrived on may 31st when the accused was found with the victim okay on questioning the on questioning he admitted to have murdered the girl by striking her 6 to 8 times with a small hatchet sometime around noon on may 31st subsequently he entered a plea of guilty to the murder charge 
and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. This is one of the examples cited in the, that is an authentic uh, case, not a fiction, which is uh, published. Okay, like, like this, there are so many, so many uh, case histories in which forensic entomology was used. Uh, as I told you uh, again uh, earlier, you may not be able to, you know, that uh, pursue a case only with entomological evidence. You should have other evidence also. So this is a supplementary evidence, entomology, forensic entomology. Okay, that is, there are so many other, if you search the Google, you will get very interesting case histories. This is the typical, uh, you know, that uh, method of uh, calculation of data, time of death what is described in this case history. There are so many other things which are very, very interesting. Place of death. This is based on the behavior and um, ecology of um, habitats, insect behavior, etc. So there are some species which are active indoors. So they, they also are always prefer indoors. That means, suppose um, uh, a body was discovered in the open. But when the insect collection was done, the species found were actually not uh, outdoor loving insects. Suppose they were indoor loving insects. That means the actual murder was done somewhere inside a room. So that kind of clues you will get. Second is um, indoor, and, uh, in, indoor active and outdoor active. Similarly, shade loving and um, sunlight loving insects. That also give you, gives you some clue, whether it was done in the open or somewhere under the shade. That kind of clues can be uh, drawn using these methods. Then urban species and um, uh, rural species. There was a very interesting uh, case history in, uh, from the U.S. Uh, that body was found in, in the city. Somewhere, I think it was in New York on the roadside. When the entomological investigation was done, all the species belong to rural areas. That means um, uh, uh, insects uh, found in rural areas you will, you will not see in the urban areas. Not all insects, some insects. There are some insects which are particular to, specific to rural areas as well as urban areas. Suppose you are finding the insect species which are specifically rural. That means the actual murder was committed in a rural area and the body was brought to the city. So that kind of um, clues uh, you can draw from entomological evidences. So these are examples of two uh, blowflies. The left one is the shade loving insect. They look like almost similar, but this one will breed only under shaded conditions. And the right one is the Lucilia, that is a sunlit area. They, they can be found only in sunlit area. So uh, that kind of entomological clues can give you some idea about place of death. Modotor, the, in this case, it is very limited. The use of um, entomology is very limited, mode of death. Still, uh, a dead body having external injuries is more attractive to insects than one having none. If you see the density of insects much, much more than expected, but it was a decayed body. You can't see injuries and all. Uh, in that case, you can, uh, you know, that um, infer that the actual uh, death was committed, done using some, uh, you know, that um, knife or that kind of things. There were a lot of wounds. If the body, if the person is strangulated by strangulating the neck, the number of insects will be less. So, support, these are all supporting clues. They are not um, exclusive clues. These are all supportive clues. Similarly, uh, you can also get um, uh, DNA samples, as I, said, as I said earlier. From the crime scene, suppose you are getting mosquitoes. Mosquitoes with blood. It really happened. From the uh, mosquito blood, they can isolate the DNA of a stranger. Then that was, they, 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 they traced the stranger and found that he was the actual killer, okay? Th there was a study, there was an incident like that, okay? So uh, that's also one of the application of forensic entomology. Then uh, uh, 
another use is in the use of drugs and toxic toxins suppose you don't have you are not getting uh, tissues for um, analysis toxic analysis but you may have uh, insect larvae on the body so from the gut of these insects insect larvae you may get sample you, you may be able to analyze the toxic uh, drugs or toxic um, uh, toxins okay so that's also an application recovery of dna samples i have already discussed okay so this uh, in all these th three areas time of death place of death and mode of death there are some applications but the i would say that um, the most important aspect is the first one that is the time of death so insect um, uh, clues are very important in time calculating time of death right? to some extent that the other two are so place of death as well as mode of death and finally uh, this is also part of medico legal forensic and demology drug traffic as i said earlier you may be able to suppose um, uh, samples of um, cannabis ganja that is confiscated and on examination you get some insects insects are geographically totally different insects found in india you may not see in afghanistan okay so if you get the species from afghan that means it originated in afghanistan or maybe pakistan also you are getting so probably it originated you are getting both afghanistan as well as pakistan that means it started in afghanistan it came through pakistan so that kind, that kind of evidences can be drawn using uh, forensic entomology okay as i said earlier for uh, forensic entomology the situation is very bad in india uh, in kerala also same condition so we, we don't have um, uh, forensic entomologists here because we don't have data the main problem is lack of data so what can be done that is some of the suggestions what can be done so there should be a very good collaboration with um, uh, you know that uh, forensic workers and entomologist suppose you are um, visiting a death scene and you are getting some larvae at least tell somebody either you collect them and give to some entomologist or you can call them because normally people like us we are very hesitant to go to <laughs> that kind of places to a dead body and all so we are a little bit scared for. so you should give them confidence okay you can call them you can allow them to collect it or you can collect and give them at least we can start developing basic data about um, the insects uh, take for example kerala so there may not be many insects which are invading corpses so study only those start with a few species especially the major species so you can have very good data what you have to done lot of experiments have to be done it's not the matter of um, identifying the species the biology should be studied properly and the growth of the larvae should be studied under controlled environment at different temperatures then you should have the data at 20 degrees celsius what is the period of development 25 what is a development period like that there should be thorough knowledge about the biology It takes time but we should start now uh, americans they, st they started long long back maybe 50 years back they started so now they have a very good data about insects cadaverating insects so that can be done if somebody is interested you can collaborate with the nearest universities or um, colleges i was also very interested when i joined government college madapalli i was a scientist before that so my area of interest is actually mosquitoes i'm a mosquito mosquitologist actually okay so i was working with malaria dengue chikungunya all those kinds of things and i was in goa for 10 years i was working with the national institute of malaria research for 10 years then i when i came back to kerala i thought i would do forensic entomology and as a beginning i gave a small project to one of my msc students it was a girl so she started bringing the blow flies and you you require meat for that for growing them for growing the larva then it started smelling foul smelling so everybody <laughs> objected so that is the time i dropped the idea of following pursuing 
uh, forensic entomology. You require a very good lab for that. You should have, should have very good laboratories. A separate facility should be there. Then only we can uh, pursue that kind of research. It's a dirty business, to say frankly. Okay, but somebody can initiate, some, especially in the universities, they can do it. So I have, um, um, in a very short time, I just introduced what is forensic entomology. I know that if you prolong, if I prolong, you will start sleeping. So because I'm a teacher, I've been teaching my students. I know the psychology of teachers, psychology of students. <laughs> okay. So this is more than enough. And if you have any uh, particular uh, doubts or suggestions, whatever it is, you can discuss with me. OK, in that case, thank you very much. Somebody has a question? OK. How does moisture affect the development of uh, uh, the life cycle? Does it accelerate or...? Uh, moisture actually um, accelerates. But uh, it, it, it may vary from species to species. We are not very sure about all species. Because some of some of the insects may they have a love for moisture, some others may not be having. So exactly we can't say. We have to study that. Is it possible to identify the time uh, using the pupal phase? Uh, pupa normally, yeah. In, uh, you see, uh, in the case of um, flies, normally it is not more than two days, two to three days. That is the lifespan of a pupa. So you will get an approximate, uh, exactly you may not be able to say, whether it is the first day or second day or third day. But from the color, normally it will be light colored uh, at the time of pupation. Then it will become darkening. So dark pupa means it is at least one day older. So you will get some idea. Anyway, it will not be, uh, you know, uh, accurate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, we will get a pupal case. Uh -huh, okay. Using that pupil case, is it possible to get any information? Uh, uh, very difficult. Only thing is, you, you, you may be able to identify the species. Using the uh, Yeah, case. but we don't know when it em emerged. The emergence date, uh, it may not be possible to calculate. So somebody, even I think from forensic department, approached me <laughs> regarding this. Yeah. Of a different origin or the same flies at a different period, it lays eggs. Is that possible in a in so one fly? Yeah. Different stages. Um, at uh, different times, it is laying eggs on that body. Yeah, it is possible. It's, it's, uh, not uh, you, you can say for this uh, blow flies, for examples, yes. uh, it may lay eggs after uh, two hours, or it may also. Uh, lay eggs after one day also. Because when we get yes, bodies, possible. we have different types of eggs on that body. So mm -hmm. that, that will be different species. Maybe different yeah, yeah. species. Different species, yeah. Even from the uh, morphology of the eggs also, you can, to some extent, you can identify what species is that. Not exact species, at least uh, genus level, you may be able to identify. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be kept in alcohol. There are different uh, volatiles. Uh, some of the names I have uh, given here. Actually, we don't know which is the uh, uh, single uh, volatile which is attracting. There is a group of volatiles. Okay, uh, actually, which um, organic volatiles? All of them are organic volatiles uh, by the activity of bacteria. They are getting emitted. There was a particular study on that. The most important VOCs resulting from decomposed order are the polysulfide compounds, namely dimethyl sulfide, uh, dimethyl disulfide, and dimethyl trisulfide. So these are based on some studies. Still, we don't know exactly whether they are the only uh, volatiles. So, 
this just based on one laboratory study. There could be more than this. So this I have taken from a paper. Hmm. Yeah, that, yeah, that's also an uh, uh, interesting question. Uh, many of these insects are active only during daytime. So night time means there will be no egg laying. That difference will be there. So it says that this uh, maggots doesn't make any uh, tissue damage. They will be entering through orifices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gradually, gradually. Do any maggots or any larvae will increase the body tissue? Yes, yes, yes. Actually, they are decomposers. Insects are decomposers. There, there are some insects which can invade your body when you are alive. Especially these uh, screw worms. They can invade even live in your flesh. There are some insects. Is there any biochemical test to detect whether an exoscelter belongs to insect or any other organism? Pardon? Is there any biochemical test yeah. to detect an yeah. exoscelter yeah. is found to be belongs to a particular insect or any other organism? There is, there is. Because that contains chitin, this insect elytra, that contains chitin. Because in my lab, we should be the IOR asking. Mm -hmm. Such a type of question that may collect certain supposed to be the exoscelter from this and see that. It can be, it can be. It can be very different. Can you name a test for that? We are searching for that. Right, no, I don't. I can send you if you if you want, I can send you. It's very, very easy because no other animals have that kind of exoskeleton. The actual issue is that fungus are supposed to be the same if you don't I see, okay, okay. When, uh, when that particular uh, MO contains fungal infection, then mm -hmm. they will answer positive for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not very sure about it. Thanks. I will check it. But the, you know, the proportion may be different, the ratio of um, it may be different in insects and fungi. Any other doubts? Because these volatiles are not coming out. So volatiles should come out. Then only more insects will be attracted. attracted. That's the reason. Then means there are no wounds. wonderful speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. I request respected Sri Shaji P, Head of the Department, Forensic Science, Kerala Police Academy, to present a memento as a token of our gratitude to Dr. P. K. Sumodhan. Sir, please.
थैंक यू सर